Hey, Forest Box Kids, Miss Katie here. This week we are going to be watercoloring a yellow jacket together. The materials we will need are our watercolor paints, we will need a cup of water, our brush, our number two pencil, a black colored pencil, and then as always with watercolor, it is always helpful to have some paper towels to dab your paint with. Let's go over our basic elements of design. Okay, we have line, shape, form, value, color, space, and texture. This week we are going to be doing lines and shapes. Um, we'll definitely be doing color, and then in essence we have values with that. And that are, that are those are the only um, basic elements of design that we will be using this week. Okay, so I wanna first highlight that this looks a little bit shiny when it's flat because of the reflection of my light, but I want you to see how dark that black is, okay? That's what we're aiming for this week. While I talk about some basic shapes, you can be adding water to your yellow and your black in your paint trays. You will only need a small amount of black because we want it to be quite strong. And then your yellow, I want you to create a darker yellow and then um, in another tray with a lot more water, a light yellow. We have a dark yellow on the body, a light yellow on the wings, and those are our two different values of yellow. All right, so our basic shapes that we see, um, lots of circles and ovals. We have circles here, circles in the head, and then we have lines for the arms. Quick fact, did you know that the legs of a yellow jacket are sit there are six um, segments of each leg. So I drew five lines on each for segments. And did you also know that yellow jackets, they bite and they sting. So they are a double threat. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with our drawing of our basic yellow jacket. Now with our drawing, I want you um, to know that the bigger you draw your bee, the easier it will be to watercolor. There are some really fine spaces in here because we're gonna try to leave um, paint around these arms. So if you have a bigger bee, or a big ol', a bigger, excuse me, not a bee, a yellow jacket, it's gonna be easier to paint in these tiny areas. So if you are younger, I highly encourage you to draw a yellow jacket as big as your hand, okay? Mine might be smaller, but yours can definitely be bigger. Okay, let's go ahead and start with our basic shapes. I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna keep it on a tilted axis. So I'm gonna draw a line where my ovals are gonna sit. All right. And then I'm gonna start with the, um, the main body here. That would not be the, um, the abdomen, I think that's the pedial. A smaller oval right here. And then a larger one. Coming off the bottom. They're touching, okay? I'll bring that in for you. And then I'm gonna do a smaller head, a smaller circle right here. All right, so now we're gonna go around the edges and connect the two. So this is round and we're gonna come in and then connect them with a curved line. It's round, comes in and connects. And then around the bottom, there's an extension for the stinger, okay? Now for the head, we're gonna come off of this circle and create a little bit of a mouth where he has his jaws for biting here. Okay, and I'll bring it in for you. We are done with the basic body of our yellow jacket. I'm gonna go ahead, before I draw my wings and my arms, I'm gonna go ahead and erase the basic lines in the middle. I'm gonna keep the line that separates the head from the rest of the body, but all the other internal lines I will erase. All right, doesn't look much like a yellow jacket at this point, but we are definitely getting there. And I'm gonna go ahead and give it a nice darker outline. 
just so you can see. In the very end, we are going to be outlining with our black colored pencil. Okay, so now we have these three arms. They actually have six, but we're just gonna be drawing the ones on this side and we are pretending and imagining that they're hidden behind his body on the other side. So we've got one sticking out and I'm just gonna be drawing a line down. We're gonna call this a leg. It's gonna be a little bit longer than the rest. And I'm gonna make a parallel line all the way down with it and I'm gonna loop it at the end. And then at the start of this leg, I'm gonna draw a curve so that you can see where it starts, okay? And then I'm gonna draw smaller ones that go up a little bit. And then I'm with after the first line, I'll draw a parallel line and another curve. And then I'm gonna do one more just like it. Okay? Now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna erase the line on the body that um, is on each arm so that it looks like by layering here, and it's gonna look like it's overlapping, which actually gives us the illusion of depth. And in a small way, we are creating form on our yellow jacket. Okay, now we have the same thing, but the, we're gonna do the antennae, and these are gonna be long, the first one is on, the, on this side of the head. So I've got the line starting below the headline. Just like that. And then my next one is gonna start at the tip of the headline and this is going to give the illusion and it's gonna curve in the opposite direction that it's on the other side of the head. And again, in these ways, a larger B might be a little bit easier to draw. I'm gonna erase the line here of the head coming through the antenna. Okay, and then we have the same thing with the wings. We're gonna have one in front on this side and then one kind of disappearing behind. So these start in the middle of the body and they're just a real basic shape. We're gonna curve out and it's almost like, you'll notice, it's almost like a a really curvy triangle. My dogs heard the wind howling. I'm gonna make that a little bit thicker. Erase that one line. All right, so you can see how this one looks like it's overlapping the body. And I'm gonna do one more sitting behind, mirroring the line, but stopping at the body. Okay, now next we have the basic lines of the bumblebee, okay? So we're just gonna draw some curved lines to create these stripes. I'm gonna draw a curved line here. And then, so just, we're gonna create this black stripe with two lines. One, two, the second black stripe one, two, and the curving of our lines is also in a small way creating form. A third stripe, a little higher, and then one right where these two connect, okay? And then one more line here, and the rest of this body, this pedial, is going to be black. Okay, next we have the big eyeball. It's gonna be in the similar shape of the head, but just smaller, sitting within. It takes up a really good portion of the head. And then we have some lines on the wings. And these kind of look like leaf lines, like veins in a leaf. So it's one big line out, and then little ones sticking off of it and branching out. And these can be just willy-nilly just a few are all we need. And then on this one, I'm gonna create a couple extra and they're gonna have some lines that are branching off going behind the wing. Okay, we're all set to paint. So we're gonna get our yellow and we're gonna start with our vibrant yellow, all right?
And we're gonna paint with the bright yellow over the bod the whole body of our bumblebee, okay? And even though we're gonna have black spots, we're gonna paint the black on top. And it's also, we're going to go into the arms and that's gonna require some detail. But let's go ahead and just get started. We're gonna go through the body. I like to work from the outside in. And you don't even have to if you don't wanna go on the tail because we will be going through that with black. I like to turn my paper to help me make sure I can stay in the lines. Get a loose yellow there. And then here when we get to the body, it is important to go around the wings and we're gonna wanna go around, um, Actually, we don't need to go around the arms because we're going to paint the arms. So we're going to go right through them. And then I'm going to do the whole head. And we don't need to do the antenna because those are going to be black. And then now last I'm going to do these arms. And this is where the detail comes in and where sometimes if you had just a lot bigger arms because you draw, drew a bigger B, it would be easier to paint. And we're going to get this leg here. Okay. And actually I might as well. Okay. We are all set there. Now, what I'm going to do is while that is drying, I'm going to dab some water. I'm going to use the very light yellow, okay? The very light yellow that we created. And it's going to be very watery. Not a lot of yellow is in it. But we're going to paint these wings in a really light yellow. And it is helpful if you have a spare piece of paper to kind of paint on top, see if that's the shade you want, and you can barely see it. So that's actually just what I want because these wings are see-through, okay? I'm gonna move my paper around. I'm gonna start at the ends because the rest of the bee is still drying. And these wings are not as potent. They will not be as vibrant and saturated and bright as the body. They're very lacy. So I'm dabbing my brush on top of the paper towel to remove excess water so that when I get close to the body, I'm not going to blend the bright yellow and the other yellow together. Okay, a slight yellow wing, and I'll let you see it in a way it's not reflecting. And I'm going to let it dry, and then we'll be back for our black. Okay, my yellow jacket is all dry. I put my hand on, the back of my hand on it and it does not feel cool. Okay, so now we're going in with our black. Now, we want our black to be very um, saturated. Feel free to use a scrap paper. Good, now this has a puddle, so I know I have too much paint. So in order to solve that, I'm going to dab it so that when I paint, it's more of a Um, it's not as bubbly and I know it's not going to bleed. Okay. But it is very saturated. So I'm happy with that. All right. So I'm going to get a little black from the edges here and we're going to go in and start painting the black sections stripe by stripe ending with the eyeball. Let's start here. And it's nice and dark and I'm really happy about that. And this is again the section where some fine motor skills are needed and so a larger B was, would be a lot easier for younger kids than if they had, than if you're trying to paint a tiny, tiny B. All right, that one's done. Let's do the next stripe. And I called it a B. Oopsie, I am sorry. The yellow and the black, and you know, I grew up in Florida. We had bees all around and yellow jackets, and I always called 
or always for most of my life thought a yellow jacket was a bee um, until I was older. And we actually had a yellow jacket nest in our backyard that the yellow jackets made underneath a shed. And that was scary. But then someone came and got rid of it and all was solved and no one got stung. So fun fact, these guys can sting with their stinger and bite with their jaws. Their stinger does not come out when they sting you, so they can sting you repeatedly. Unlike a bee, when they lose their stinger and cannot sting you twice. I'm going to finish up my stripes and come right back. Okay, now I'm going to start this, this big section of his petiole. Um, and I'm going to slowly work around the arms. This is the tricky spot. If you happen to get black paint where you don't want it, um, what I recommend is cleaning your brush and drying it off and trying to, going back, and actually, you have two options. You can use a dry brush or a paper towel to absorb it if it's if there's a lot of it, okay? But if there's just a little bit, I would get your brush mostly dry and completely clean and then brush on top of that specific area one brush. Rinse it, get a slightly damp brush again that's completely clean, and brush on top again. And little by little, you will be removing the paint. But you must have a clean brush for every stroke, or else you'll end up just adding the paint right back on with your second stroke. And this is the trickiest part of our, draw of our um, painting today. Moving around the wings and the arms. And this little bit right here, as we move around it, is another small way we're creating form by highlighting and giving the illusion that these arms and this wing is in front of the pedial of this um, yellow jacket. Okay, the next we have the eye and the antenna. I'm gonna move my paper around And then now we're just going to go along the length of this antenna. And we have all our black finished. And I'll let you see it without the reflection. Okay, we're going to let it dry and go in with our black colored pencil and we will be done. All right, it is all dry. And the thing about really saturated paint when you add a lot of color is it really is will be reflective. Do you see that reflection and that shine? So the black has a lot more saturation than the yellow because of how shiny, how much shinier it is than the yellow. Okay, so the last thing we have is we're going to get our black colored pencil and we are going to outline the body of our yellow jacket. So let's start with the head. And I'm just going to move on top of my pencil lines that are already there. Now I'm going around the jaws. All right. So now I'm going to go into the arms. And I am going to make each arm have six segments. So I'm going to draw a line in the middle, 
in two lines on each side. One, two, one, two. And that creates six segments. Okay, now I'm gonna do draw the outline of this one. A line in the middle, two lines on each side. Because yellow jacket legs and arms have six segments. Okay, one in the middle, and then one, two, one, two. Okay, now I'm gonna go around the rest of the body and just go over the pencil the, where I can see the graphite pencil, the number two pencil marks. Okay, and then I'm gonna go around the edges of the wing and we're just gonna outline where we already have pencil, okay? The last wing. And we are all done. I'm gonna write my initials. Please feel free to write yours. Um, fun thing to add, if you wanna add some elements of space, add some flowers, just random flowers. They don't have to be connected to anything. And have the bee, or the, my mistake again, have the yellow jacket overlap uh, be on top of a flower, like there's a flower sitting behind it. You can do that, or you can draw one large flower next to it. Um, you can do all. You can draw different bees of different sizes. If you draw just a really tiny bee next, um, my goodness, yellow jacket next to it. All of a sudden, this one, the tiny one, will look really far away. Um, you're gonna have this illusion of depth created immediately just by drawing a really small yellow jacket next to it. All right, well, great job, everyone. Feel free to email me a copy of your picture. I look forward to seeing you next week. Have a wonderful week.